Yo, welcome to the first video on this channel. Let me introduce myself shortly. I played 5 years on Warth of the Lich King, 3 years on Private TBC. I barely played on Classic and I only played on the first PvP season of TBC Classic. Right now, I'm just waiting for Warth of the Lich King Classic. Considering my experience on LK, I decided to start a YouTube channel to share my knowledge, practice my English and build a community. Anyway, this first video is about the 10 biggest changes from Burning Crusade to Lich King. Number 1. The Achievements Achievements are goals that offer challenges, satisfy goal-oriented players and allow others to see your accomplishments, covering every aspect of gameplay including world exploration, PV, PvP, professions and character development. Some achievements come with in-game rewards such as mounts, tabards and tiles. Those rewards and the feeling of having completed something pushes some players to do unusual stuff like questing, exploring, making a raid against the opposite faction, but also a lot of pretty tough or long challenges like defeating a boss in a specific harder way, having to clean Nax Ramas without allowing any member during a boss fight to die. Basically, achievements are a big new type of content that also brings the old content back to life and it's also a way to see other players experience, their maximum arenas rating or if they already slew the boss before. Number 2. Random Dungeon Finder Basically, you just have to left click 2 times and you wait until the RDF finds all the other members needed by itself. In the original Wrath of the Lich King, this has been introduced with the ICC patch, which means in the middle of the extension. I hope they're gonna do the same for the classic version and I'm gonna explain why in another video. You can queue and do your thing in the meantime. When the party is full, it'll teleport you at the entrance. If someone leaves or if you forgot something, you can teleport yourself back where you were and keep doing what you were doing until this tool finds the missing slot. If you leave the party during the dungeon, you will have to wait 30 minutes to queue again, unless another member left. In this case, you can leave without gaining the disorder debuff. Number 3. The mount related changes. I didn't find a better name. The mount system received a few changes slash improvements. The casting time has been reduced from 3 seconds to 1.5, which I think is a good thing even if it allows people to run away from PvP encounters easier and I don't like that because I love world pvp. And the second change which is clearly and objectively an improvement, a separated bag for your mounts. It means that your mounts are no longer gonna be placed in your bags, but instead in your character info. Equal, more space in your bags and having all of your mounts on you all the time. Besides that water no longer dismounts you, which is really appreciable. Number 4. Inscription. A new profession that allows you to craft scrolls, a few random stuff and most importantly, the glyphs. From now on, when you reached level 15, you get access to a branch of talents where you can insert a glyph. A glyph is an item that improves one spell, ability or talents. At max level, you can insert 3 major and 3 minor glyphs. A major glyph, as its name implies, brings a major change, like per example for mages, glyph of evocation causes you to regain 60% of your health, which is insane for PvP, or the glyph of conflagrate no longer consumes emulate. Then the minor glyph is a small but still pretty cool addition, like the glyph of vanish, increases your movement speed by 30% while the vanish effect is active. Anyway, some really powerful features. It is a new type of optimization. Number 5. The infamous door specialization. One of my favorite novelties of the extension. No more having to spend hundreds of golds per week just to be able to raid and to pvp. No more having to replace your binds each time. Now you can pvp whenever you want to and switch to your pve spec only when you have to. Instead of queuing BG in PV spec because you know that you're gonna raid in 3 hours or hesitating to queue arenas for the same reason. One of the best thing in this extension. Number 6. Statistics update. What I mean is that there is no longer a difference between spell damage and spell healing between melee attack power and ranged attack power. Or melee slash spell crit hit haste. Every type of stats has been consolidated into a single one. I don't particularly care about this even though I feel like it was a bit better in TBC, especially in PvE when each item was separated by the different roles of a roster. 
Now, casters and healers could need the same stuff, same for hunters and enhancement shamans and so on. But on the other side, it also brings more possibilities in terms of equipment, optimization or gameplay. You can heal with a GPS gear and the opposite. You can decide as a caster to equip spirit items that are mainly for healers, to have a better mana regeneration as it'll be the case for a lot of Shadow Priest players in PvP. Number 7. Barbershop. Faction slash race change available. The appearance of the barbershop and the possibility of changing your name, race or faction will be available at War of the Lich King. So if you were undead and you are one of the I wanna play the most broken shit in this game, you will be able to switch to human for the best pvp ratio in the world by far. This means that you can also have characters from both factions in the same realm. So if you like playing on both factions, you're free to do it. Or if you're just a crybaby that just got killed by someone from the opposite faction, you can create a level 1 and insult this guy so he can see what kind of pussy you are. Number 8. Heroic mode and 10 slash 25 options. On the Burning Crusade there were specific 25 man raids and specific 10 man raids. On LK each new raid has a 25 slash 10 mode. The 25 mode drops better high level equipment and is supposed to be harder than a 10 raid mode. Moreover, concerning the last 3 big raids of the extension, Trial of the Crusader, Ice Crown Stadel, and the ruby sanctum there's also a heroic and a normal mode heroic and normal modes are on a separated lockout the fact that there are different modes of raid means that there are also different versions of the same set you got the chi 7 10 men and the chi 7 25 men or the chi 10 10 men 25 men it's not exactly like that but it's the idea number nine Pushback Reduction As a PvP guy that means mage, this is by far my favorite modification of this video. Simply because I think the pushback is the worst boring and frustrating mechanic in Burning Crusade. And in Wrath of the Lich King, this shit has been nerfed a lot. In TBC, each hit you received could make the casting time increased by 1.5. Now the first and second hit will add 0.5 each to the casting time. All hits after the second will have no effect. And this is without any kind of pushback reduction from talents or items. So 1 second is the maximum your casting time can be delayed. Cause in TBC, if you don't have your icy vein or if it gets dispelled, good luck to cast a single fucking spell besides having zero spell haste. Number 10. PvE and PvP currency system. Both in PvE and in PvP it has changed. In PvE, instead of having only one kind of badge that allows you to buy every item, whether they are high level or not, you have a different type of emblem for each major patch. Emblem of heroism, of valor, of conquest, of triumph, and of frost, with the possibility of exchanging an emblem for an inferior one. Concerning the PvP system, the battlegrounds marks has been removed from the game, which means you only need honor points that is also way easier to form. Some PvP parts requires both honor and honor points, which wasn't the case in TBC. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something, if you did, don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up, subscribe and follow my Twitch channel. Take care of yourself and see you next time.